3.15 in the morning. I just clocked my start, official start time. I'm just making sure everything's in order. Mile zero, here we go. All right, guys, welcome to the Iron Butt Ride. It is five o'clock in the morning, and uh, about the only thing I can say right now is that I'm really cold. <laughs> so, uh, the first 70 miles was up uh, over 7,000 feet at, you know, four in the morning, coldest time of the day. All right. Just pulled over to admire this beautiful sunrise over the mountains, but I can't stop for too long. So we're gonna keep on plugging here. 130 miles in. Wow, well that sunrise is imminent. Any minute now, that sun is gonna pop up over that horizon. But in the meantime, we're about to go over the Roosevelt Bridge here, which is pretty sweet. I remember going over this last year. What a cool little spot. Sunrise on the Roosevelt Bridge. Dang, this doesn't get any better. So much green offsetting the cactus, the saguaros. Oh, there it is! Just like that. Sunrise over Roosevelt Lake on a beautiful April morning. 143 miles into our iron butt ride. <laughs> beautiful. Love it. Love it. All right, we're doing good. We're uh, about to pull away from the lake here and make, start making our way to uh, the town of Globe. And then from there, I believe we are on uh, some new terrain, some new uh, roads that I haven't seen before. So at any rate, it's gonna start getting really warm here pretty quickly since we are now in the desert and the sun is coming up. So I'll finally stop shivering and uh, hopefully shed some layers too. So, all right, check in in a bit. I'm gonna enjoy this scenery. So the geology here is stunning. There's some beautiful bedding, uh, sedimentary layers that are bedded but tilted. Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's incredible. You can see some right there, but I'm just, you know, I'm a big geology buff. I mean, my, my advanced degrees are in geoscience, so all, all of the geology of Arizona is quite spectacular. I mean, I do live in the Grand Canyon State after all, so. All right, well, we are at a gas station here in Benson, Arizona. We are just about a third of the way through the ride. We're at 322 miles. And uh, more importantly though, this spot right here marks the southernmost point on the entire loop. So starting now, we're gonna be making our way back north and a couple hours we'll be on that really cool twisty mountain road. So. As you can see, that's the farthest point south right there. Um, and then we just slowly start making our way. And that section that I'm really excited about is right in there. So, so this last stretch that we've been on, <clears throat> about 45 miles, have been on I-10, the interstate. And it, it's definitely not been my favorite. It was the one part of this route that I wasn't particularly excited about. Um, but I needed to get over to the other side of uh, the loop and this was the, <laughs> the best way to do it. So I just kind of suck it up and bang out these uh, 100 miles on the interstate. Uh, I mean, they're easy miles, but I, I definitely can't keep up with traffic. You know, traffic on this interstate's going 85 and you know, I'm, I'm lucky if I get 75, so. I'm just trying to 
to do my best to stay out of everybody's way. And, you know, usually I can find like a, like a big trailer or a big uh, cargo truck <laughs> to kind of tuck in behind. And everyone then just goes around. What's with all these signs that just say, the thing, the thing. That's so weird. <laughs> Clearly it's some sort of roadside attraction. What is it? Well, their marketing is working because I really want to find out what the thing is. All right, 425 miles, and we're finally starting to get into some real twisty, close mountainous terrain. And the good stuff is only going to keep coming. So I'm getting really excited. Uh, this middle section of the ride, sort of between miles 400 and 600, uh, I was the most excited about, and specifically for this road that's coming up, but this is already looking so amazing. I mean, this is, look at this. There's little buttes and pinnacles and mittens and mesas and all those good things. Volcanic rocks. We still got the sedimentary rocks. You got snow on some of the peaks. You got green because of all the water. It's just been, this has already been really cool. Okay, it is exactly noon. We're at 400 and almost 50 miles. So we're getting really close to the halfway point for the town of Clifton slash Marenzi. And this was a perfect place to take a longer break and have some lunch. And so I did all that. And now I'm going to head off into the twisty mountain road. So uh, it's probably good that I decided to take a little break, uh, focus, have a little caffeine and uh, crack my knuckles here and get ready to, to dive in. So I'm very excited uh, for the next 100 miles or so. I think it's gonna be really pretty. It's gonna be a little slow but I think that'll be, it'll all be worth it. All right, so clearly this is a huge mining town. Uh, I'm gonna have to look this up when I get home, but if this is the Marenzi mine, I'm guessing, uh, but it's massive. Look at all the debris and those tailings. It's just insane. This is crazy that this is the state highway. It goes right through the mine. So weird. Man. I just feel like I'm not supposed to be here. This is so weird. <laughs> it is a little bit spooky in this tunnel, that's for sure. Look at this mine. What is this place? This is the largest mine I've ever seen. And it's active. I mean, they are hauling away materials. And just looking at what I'm seeing in front of me, I'm going to guess uranium. It's copper, actually, which makes sense given that Arizona is the copper state. Go figure. That's my guess. God, I wish I had my uh, Geiger counter. I'd be able to see if... We're getting any sort of background radiation here, but I think I might like to move on. <laughs> All right, we're getting into some trees. Like not just junipers, but like cottonwoods and oak trees. This is like ice cream on a Sunday afternoon. Absolutely gorgeous, man. This is definitely worth the 467 mile, nine hour wait. <laughs> it's crazy to think though that we're still not even halfway on this little endeavor. But uh, yeah, we're definitely not doing 40. <laughs> we're doing 25. So we're gonna chew into our cushion a bit, but that's okay. I just had a realization that as we climb on this road, uh, we're basically climbing back up to the Mogollon Rim, to the Colorado Plateau, and um, and then we stay up there for the rest of the ride. 
So all the low stuff will be over. We don't come back down as we go way up to Navajo Nation and play around up there and that's all, that's all higher elevation. Oh my goodness. That one was really tight. I keep wanting to turn the camera off to save battery, but I mean, I how can I? Look at this. This just keeps going. And there's some peaks way off in the distance over there that have some snow on them too. I don't know if that's going to come out in the footage, but way over there. I'm not sure what peaks those are, but whoa, I got to pay attention. I don't want to drive off the edge here. <laughs> this is a little sketchy, man. Oh my goodness. HL saddle. Okay, this might be the high point right there. Um, I know that we hit some kind of saddle high point. I can't remember what it was called, but if that's the high point, I want to say it was maybe even up to 9,000. So we are pretty dang high up right now. Man, it's crazy these views. All right, we're going through a burn area now. <laughs> Way up on top of this ridge line, and there are some snow drifts up here. I've already seen a couple. So we, we are definitely getting back up into the alpine zone. Uh, and it's, it's really cold too. So we have topped out again, pretty high up. Ooh, now we're coming around to the north face. Yep, there's some snow right there. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. There's no way I could have done this road uh, back in February. There's just no way. It would have been completely iced over. So... I'm really glad it all just serendipitously worked out. I mean, it meant that we had a really long winter, but uh, I would have not been able to go this way. All right, something else that's pretty exciting. Uh, my, my cumulative mileage is 499.8. So we are, oh, 0.9. So we are just about to roll over uh, to, there it is. Half of an iron butt. It's like just one cheek. <laughs> so it's the bronze butt, we'll say. Yeah, sure. We are 10 hours in, so that puts us uh, at about a 20 hour, 20 hour turnaround if we keep the same sort of <clears throat> plan going here for the second half. We don't run into any trouble should be able to come in around 20 hours. All right, we're finally about to top out on the highest point here before heading down out of the mountains. And it is snowy, look at this. This is crazy. We are really high up into the pine trees now. All right, we are in the town of Springerville, mile 570-ish. Um, I made it through the difficult mountain section, the White Mountains, uh, went through the little town of Alpine, really beautiful but very slow, a lot of really tight twists and turns and switchbacks and it was insanely cool but as expected it, uh, it slowed me way down. Well we've got some bighorn sheep going at it in the middle of the road. <laughs> That's not something you see every day. Look at this big horned sheep right in the road. And there's one over there too. That's wild. All right, everyone. So I've got some updates for you. It is um, getting close to five o'clock, so it's starting to cool off a little bit. The sun's getting a little bit low. I'm definitely gonna be driving into the night uh, to finish this thing. But I wanted to give you some uh, updates, good news and bad news, I guess. Uh, the good news is that um, if you look at my mileage, I'm almost at 666.7, which would be two thirds. So I'm almost two thirds of the way through my iron butt ride. 
<clears throat> I am 13 hours in, so that's really good. That's still kind of putting me on pace for like 20, 21 hours. Uh, and that's with all that slow stuff back there. So that's the good news. But uh, <clears throat> the, on the bad news side of the coin, uh, nothing catastrophic. The bike is still running okay. But I got to say, like right now, uh, I'm in a bit of a low. Like I'm not super enjoying this right now. Even though the scenery is lovely, the sun is beautiful. We've got some nice wispy clouds. It's hard because uh, I've been sitting on this bike for 13 hours. Uh, my legs are stiff, my knees are getting stiff, and I still have over 300 miles to go. So, you know, that's a big number. 300 miles is a big number. And I still have that left at 5 p.m. So I'm definitely not gonna get home until like close to midnight, I think. Ah, in a funk. So shake it off try to bang out some miles here and uh, yeah next uh, big milestone I think is um, probably Canyon Shea and then we will make our way all the way up to the almost the Utah border okay so we're watching the sunset here up the Navajo Nation just like we saw the sunrise this morning we're getting a beautiful sunset over these vast open plains and these cool mesas off to the right and rock formations. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. I can't believe this. It's so cool. It's been a really interesting day. Lots of great scenery and landscapes. Uh, quite a few highs. Sadly, a few lows as well. And I'm still kind of fighting off that low that I talked about in the last little update. But <clears throat> There's two things that are starting to brighten my spirits other than this amazing sunset. One is that we're starting to get close to 800 miles. The other thing that's got me really excited is if you look at my map here, you'll see we're moving north along this blue line. And eventually in about 20 miles or so, we're gonna hit this upper corner and then turn left, turn west on Route 160. And what is so significant about that turn right there is that corner represents the farthest point from home, uh, at least on the northern half of the loop. And so from the moment we turn left there, I'm effectively heading home. And that's just a huge motivational boost that I need because right now I feel like I'm going the wrong way. Like I'm going away from home. I need to be going that way to get home, to finish this iron butt ride. And so when I make that left turn, uh, it's gonna actually feel like, okay, the job is done. Now I just gotta ride the 200 miles back home. Here we go, we're coming up on the turn for Route 160. I'm about to start heading home. 792 miles. This is amazing. I can't wait till I see that first sign for Flagstaff. It's gonna be awesome. Here we go. Heading home. Yes. All right, super exciting news, everybody. I'm at the gas station. I just filled up my last on route fill up. Got a receipt, got everything documented, and I've got something like 70 or 65 miles to go. Uh, I'm in the 900s, and I've just gotta pop down the road here. I'm in Cameron, Arizona right now. Just gotta pop down the road about 10, 15 miles, and then I'm gonna jog into the Sunset Crater National Park and do the little loop through there only because if I go straight home from here I'll be like 12 miles short. So I added that little loop um, In Sunset Crater, so we'll go do that and then once we pop out the other side of Sunset Crater It's a straight shot home. So super exciting. I'm very very excited uh, I'm cold it's late, but uh, we're nearly there, so. All right, this is pretty exciting. 998.4. I'm about uh, four miles from home, so 
I really dialed this uh, loop in almost perfectly. Um, it came up a little shorter than uh, the mapping software said it would, so I'm glad that I added in that 10 mile buffer, because it's gonna end up only being about a three mile buffer. But uh, this is exciting. I can't believe I'm still awake and alert, and uh, I'm not that cold, surprisingly. It's amazing uh, just keeping your core warm, what it can do, but I'm back up here in town, 7,000 feet, and it is cold. So I'm just happy that I, I don't have frozen fingers right now. 999.2! This is so exciting! And we're at 19 hours and 35 minutes. We're gonna we're gonna hit a thousand uh, on the interstate here. I decided to take a five mile stretch on the interstate just to get back home faster. Um, but here's our exit, two miles. And we're at 999.9, here we go! This is so exciting! <laughs> The Grand Ride. There it is! 0, 0.0. We just hit 1,000 miles. A Grand Ride. Woo! How about that? Splendid. I am ready to go to bed, my friends. I'm just clocking some bonus miles now. Oh, I am definitely getting wobbly. I should not be riding anymore. I am officially unsafe to ride. So it's really good that we're a mile from home because I should, uh, should, not, should not be riding this motorcycle right now. All right, here we go. We are officially ending this thing. I cannot believe we survived this. Oh my god. Oh, 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 good lord. Oh. oh, yes. Great success. My uh, service light started blinking. Uh, I think that just means that it's telling me I need to do an oil change. Man, I can't believe it. That's it. We're done. We have an official timestamp. Let's see if we can get home. We got one mile. Let's not crash. Oh, it is really cold. I can't believe it was successful. I can't believe it, dang it. We set out to do this and we did it. Fantastic. But I am starting to get really, really cold. So this is really good timing 